Hey guys, Delahan here with another Dawn War 3 chef cast. Today we got a match between Spirit playing Space Marines against Kist, who is also our Korean orc guy. Um, he goes by the name of Sexbeam on GearMePlace.org, so that's what I'm going to refer to him by because that's fucking awesome. So we got Sexbeam here playing orcs and Spirit up on the northeast playing Space Marines on Common Rest. So from uh, Mr. Spirit, we got a barracks opening. He has a lot of... Both players have a lot of early game elites. We do have uh, Deathwatch Librarian Vendred for Spirit with the uh, improved listening post and uh, some tack marines, grenades, and fire on the move. And then for Mr. Orcs, we got uh, stuck in, healing scrap, and tons of bombs. And then we got all the early game elites, Stormboys, Weird Boy, and Gorguts. So we do have also, we have Stormboys Command that gives us suicide bombers to war trucks. We got a log tower coming up, facing the wrong way. And then we got uh, boys' huts. So we're going to see some early shootouts, most likely. We got two boys, one shooter queued up. We got two tack marines and four servitors. We got a rec gen coming up here. No economy here yet for orcs, but not too far behind at all. We got some uh, scouting up here with this servitor. A little bit of uh, aggressive capping from these boys, kind of trying to secure this middle point. We've captured a point. We are seeing a capture of this elite point. Maybe we're going to see an elite point generator now that the cost is fixed. It used to be if you built it sooner, it was cheaper than if you built it later. So it was always advantageous to build it right away. But uh, maybe we'll see elite point generator, maybe not. I would like to see that because maybe we can see the vendor coming out a little earlier. It's roughly two minutes per elite points without the generators. These boy squads are getting a little bit caught out, taking a ton of damage here. Um, I think they actually need to get out of here. We do got second boy squad coming in. Not using the, the boy shout ability here at all, though, which I'm a little disappointed with. Because uh, that could really boost your damage. The grenades have been used, so he can safely shout and get the, the bonus, but he's just pulling back instead. We're going to get some scrap on these shooters, perhaps. And we're going to see some uh, bomber boys, tons of bombs. We do got second shooter squad coming. Pretty standard opening in 2 2 is kind of a pretty safe orc opening. We're seeing these attacks get really aggressive here, which is... I don't know about that decision, I think... Well, okay, we're seeing healing scrap being used to get these guys extra model or two. We've got some ASMs and a drop pod coming, so that'll be, uh, useful. Yeah, okay, we're gonna see a log here. We are gonna see maybe some shouting. We've got power gen up, works pretty early here. We've got a wreck gen up here, pretty... Yeah, I think that's a little over-aggressive. No, nope, he cancelled it and he's rebuilding it. I guess he changed his mind. We've got second wreck gen almost done up here. So, map patrol is mostly in Spirit's favor right now. He definitely has more generators on the go. Orc log is coming off, and he is running to the bottom corner of the map for reasons unknown, perhaps. I'm not really sure what the point is. Maybe he really wants to kill this servitor. Yeah, the orc army setting upon that poor servitor and eliminated him. Uh, great use of log, great use of, uh, you know, a big army attack like that. Excellent use. Uh, no power gens yet for space frames. We do have a doctrine chapel coming up on the middle of the map, and a number of rec gens. So we're saying four rec gens total from Spirit alongside this doctrine chapel. That's not a bad choice if you're space frame because you need lots of rec to build those devastators and tacks and assault planes. We got a second tack being built as well. Um, no armory, no pile guns just yet. These tacks are harassing this part of the map. This generator got cancelled, so that's kind of a waste of time. We did get a grot that went down. Yeah, we do have another attack coming out. No armory, no attack upgrades. We do have uh, the servitor coming in and drop out on this this tower. That's gonna be a big blow. Does I don't know if that killed it or he canceled it. I'm gonna suspect that that killed it. Uh, we got the uh, servitor being called in here as well. That'll that'll fend off these assault marines pretty handily. But they might be able to snipe this power gen in time. They do have the shield, so they might be able to do it. Oh, that but the bomber boys doing a ton of damage to those assault marines. They're probably gonna go for this generator and jump out. They can't be jumped again. So, if these Stormblades jump on them. Nope. Okay. Never mind. Uh, these attacks are just idle. These units are running back. We've got a power gen coming up. Second power gen up here. No elite point generators yet. One power gen up here for Spirit just starting. These assault marines are getting caught out, and because of that boy stun, they didn't jump out, so they are going to die. That's a pretty big blow. I don't know if training an assault marine squad for one power generator is worth it. Silvertor did secure this bubble, though, so that might be instrumental later in the game, probably. Uh, Walk Tower being replaced. I think he canceled it. I hope he canceled it. So we're probably going to see uh, him, uh, I, it really triggers me, he's not uh, getting the scrap as soon as possible on these shooters to take advantage of tons of bombs. Uh, another power gen coming up here, so we're going to see probably two power gens for orcs and no rec gens. And then uh, we've got tons of economy for spirit here. 
Uh, we don't have... We do have a Devastator Squad finished as well. That's going to be pretty bad for those boys and shooters, honestly. They have a hard time with these Devastators without uh, some tools. But uh, we do got Storm Boys to counter that. Deathwatch hasn't been called in yet either, so maybe he's going to skip Deathwatch and go for the Librarian. I think that's the better choice. Uh, Deathwatch is good, but getting that Librarian that much earlier, I find that's more advantageous. Yeah, we're going to the fast tech here. Another Wong Tower coming down. We're going to see Wong activated at kind of a weird timing because... You can see that I talked about this in one of my tips of the week about scrap cycles. He should have waited to get the scrap first, and then he could have got this scrap at the same time and had more scrap for all these units. Although he does mostly have these units scrapped up here. We do have one boy squad that's missing it, but that's what it is. Storm boys don't have any. And we're going to see the wild squad that's miss the squad, and these units are probably going to attack right into these techs. This is a big space brain force. I don't know if this is going to work with just that normal walk bonus. He has to run so far across the map, right? And it lasts about, I think, 30 seconds by default. So, by the time he actually gets in an engagement here, it's going to run out, and he's going to basically miss the bonus. And these squads are going to get attacked. We do have the tons of bombs going off, but you can see the AOE on those grenades looks larger to me. I don't know if they changed the AOE or not. It does look larger to me. So we're going to see this generator go down. Requisition gen is going down. This generator went down here, so we're going to some eco harassment. This Dr. Chapel might also go down here. Uh, this doesn't look like Spirit's moving to defend it. He might actually scout out these generators trying to kill that. We still don't have... You can see, I talked about this in another tip of the week, about how people kind of ignore the elite point generators on this map. You can see, at least, oh, we do have it being built as well by Spirit, but most people don't even bother capturing it. They just ignore it completely. So sometimes you can actually capture this point and build an elite point generator, and they will never know about it because they don't go over to the look. We are going to see the Space Marine forces engage these Orc forces using the standard. Stormblade should probably just jump out of here. Yeah, I think Orcs should just pull out of this engagement, go get a log bonus, and then come back into it. Let him use the standard duration up. Uh, capping this point is awesome. We're going to see the Servitor Widow Wave, the Power Gen. This point is not upgraded, but it does have all the generators. Uh, Tech-wise, no Tier 2, no pile of guns. We do have a Daka Hut up, so we might see some Ludas. That would be a good counter to the Space Marine Force. We do got the Librarian coming out instead of the Death Watch, like I expected. So that's going to be a really hard thing to deal with, because Librarian is really good against uh, boys and shooters. He does a lot of damage to them, he has a lot of AoE damage, he has a lot of buffs with his blind and boost all the damage of these units. So, this is going to be a tough space rating for us for what to do. This generator is going to get sent. Oh no, it does get cancelled. Okay, so he did get a partial refund there. Uh, no loot as yet. No other units. You can see he's got about 7 on requisition here, 100 power. So, I really would like to see like 2 loot squads like now. That would be a really good counter to this composition. But, uh... He's activated Wog, his army's not there, so these Storm Boys are going to get buffed. Um, Sex Beam here is uh, one of the best players in the game right now, apparently. He has uh, top 10 of all the races, but I'm not going to lie, I don't really like his style of playing Orcs. I feel like he doesn't make very effective use of Wog or his tech. He seems to have like a very fixed build order. You see Librarian, the, the shot just bouncing between his squads. We've got a Shooter Squad's going to go down, this Shooter Squad's probably going to go down. And we got, yeah, that's, that's two units down, no units to replace them yet. We might have some queued up there, but uh, I'm trying to switch here. But he got one shooter squad to be built. But again, he could have. He has nine hundred requisition. He should have three more squads right now. Um, people tend to play Dawn War Three in a weird way to me. Even Spirit here could have more units, but I think he's spending his resources elsewhere. He's getting a listening post up here. I would like to see an armory and get some damage upgrades. But yeah, I find people play Dawn War Three in a really weird way. If you ever play Dawn War Two, usually you're playing with about five or six units. Uh, for most of the game, maybe seven or eight if you're playing with like, Tyranids and you're playing super like mid late game with lots of Hormigons. But people tend to play Dawn of in a way where they build like five or six units and they just stop building units. You should always be pumping out more and more and more. So he's got some stuff queued up. He built this Daka Hub, but he didn't build anything from the Daka Hub. He's building some knobs. So again, that was his point. He just wanted to save up money to get those knobs. But knobs are not, like, knobs are good counters to this composition, but like, that's how he gets power swords anyway. But we're gonna lose the Daka Hub. This log is going to go off, but I think the knobs are going to come out, and they're going to finish after. But I think we are going to see this force repelled. This Devastator is in a good spot. Stormboys could jump on it, but uh, this is going to be kind of a tough fight for the Orcs here. We do got all these units bumped up, taking massive damage from the Devastator before they manage to disrupt it. Wasting the grenades a bit there, taking a ton of damage, just being kited by these Space Marine forces. And I think we're going to see uh, these boy squads go down. This Bomber Boys is... Mostly dodged. It does hit Jonah, but Jonah doesn't care. I would like to see him activate the stone wall right here, and then maybe he can finish off those those boy squads, but he doesn't use it. Um, the Salt Marines are getting a little too greedy here. I think Orc is pulling back here a lot. He, he should have these shooters shooting 
Uh, or something. We got uh, Zap Noggins probably gonna come in here. I don't see him waiting for Gore Gust, but he might. This Elite Point Generator is quietly just being a massive bonus for Spirit. And you do see Spirit. Oh no, that was actually a Sex Beam captures the Elite Point Generator. So he does have Vision there now. But uh, in terms of Elite Points, we are gonna see. Uh, we could see Death Watch at any time here, or we could see it, save it for the Bendred. I would probably recommend the Bendred. The knobs are out, so they do have Scrap. We could see the Axe Throw be used to really uh, fuck up Jonah's day. But we're going to see a tax squad go down here. I would like to see a war truck with the reinforcement upgrade to really help uh, bolster his army. A pile of guns would be nice too. Armory would be nice too. We do got massive eco though for uh, spirit. This point's upgraded once. We got listening posts coming up across the map. That's what the advantage of all those wreck gems is. This squad, look how long it's immobilized by those knobs. Like the axe just immobilizes him. He's going to pick off another tax squad here. He's wasting these grenades though. Uh, we're gonna say drop pod coming down right on those knobs, right on the taunt, and it is death watch coming in. He's gonna throw the worship grenade. These knobs are gonna take a ton of damage now from Jonah and the death watch. So they might actually go down here if they don't escape. They do have the healing, the armor explosion going off, but kind of doing nothing. This knob spot might actually go down. We do have a listening post up here, but I might keep it alive. We do have uh, another shooter squad coming up. I would like to see some more boys. I think uh, we need some wreck jams as well for Mr. Uh, Sex Beam. He hasn't been building any, and he's starting the show at this point in the game. Now that we're phase two, and he's not uh, making as much uh, refund income from these dead units. So this po this resource is going to go down here. Going to lose this power gen. I'm not really sure what the point is of spamming these power gens like this. If you're not uh, like orcs, if you're going to do massive power, you need to get a pile of guns to get upgrades. Like rushing knobs is not worth it. We do have the pile of guns finally coming up now, but this is you know 11, 12 minutes into this game. He's just thinking about it. Really, my preferred style is to go water even two pile of guns and just get a wild tower maybe two and then just get double upgrades on my infantry we are gonna see gorgas probably come in now that'll be a, a decent uh he'll be pretty helpful against this kind of composition here but i think uh, spirit just has too much map control right now and he's probably going he's going tier two right now so we're probably going to see a dreadnought and the dreadnought is going to just destroy everything that's Sex Beam has right now. He doesn't have a Daka hide anymore. He has a lot of scrap on the ground. I would like to see him pick it up, especially with Gorgas here, with the Storm Boys here. And just have him use those abilities to his advantage. We have the power guns coming up. We're going to see anything queued up. I would like to see Longo Wug. I'd like to see infantry upgrades and re truck reinforcement. A lot of upgrades. Uh, that's my preferred style of playing Orcs, is playing infantry, lots of reinforcement and infantry upgrades, and just put all my power into that basically. Don't even bother with vehicles until like. Phase 4 when you can uh, build them from scrap for cheap. We are going to see this barracks maybe get sniped as assault rate. Might have to run away here. But uh, you see the walk bonus once again is worn off completely by the time he gets into a fighting position. That's the problem with building all your towers in one spot at your base. And we're going to see these units get locked out. And we're going to see these ones take a ton of damage. These, these squads are going to get wiped out here. Um, he is actually locking his own units in his librarian stonewall there. So it wasn't the most effective thing. But we're saying these shooter spots isolated. These knobs are able to hit his barracks. But uh, these shooter spots are going to take a ton of damage. Probably going to lose two spots, maybe three. Oh, they might just barely get away here. He's not focus firing on as much as he could. Uh, these knobs are, again, isolated. Damage buff is going to go on for about 10 seconds here from that librarian. So these units are all going to do uh, extra damage. But uh, he doesn't have a lot of counters to knobs specifically. And this this, this spinning claw is going to be extremely deadly, actually, to all these units. He does have a ton of shields right now from the standard. But... Uh, uh, this assault rays might manage to disrupt Gorgas. Yeah, they do manage to disrupt the claws, so the claw isn't maximized. I think that's why you just pull these units out of here. These, uh, you can see how much damage these knobs are taking. Uh, we do have the armory coming up, and we do have infantry help one being researched. So I think we are seeing these upgraded. We do have Longa Wag finally upgraded. So that'll help with running across the map like this. But you can see how much more economy Spirit has right now. There's way more generators. He's had this elite point generator this entire time. And at this point, he's about probably five minutes away from the venture maybe a bit more longer than that he's four points it's about 90 seconds each 70 seconds each so whatever that is times four probably about six or seven minutes but not that far away and i don't think uh sex beam is going to have a whole of using the watch twice at once i'm what i really like he's trying to heal with it obviously he's trying to save some money but i don't know i think that's a waste honestly because now you got two towers on cooldown for you know 250 seconds that's you know, just under five minutes, four and a half minutes? That's a long time to not have any log bonus. I prefer the stagger it myself. And, uh, you know, what did he save there? 100 requisition, 200 requisition. Didn't even reinforce everything. I don't know. I feel like it's a bad move. Never log tower up. So we got four, four log towers up for Mr. Oryx. 
the fourth tower isn't that useful. The only thing that unlocks is uh, the call the boys for the boys show, but I've never seen people use this ever to me. It's actually a really powerful upgrade because it lets you just reinforce your boys for free every 30 seconds. Uh, it can be really powerful. We're gonna see orcs pushing in. We're gonna see this doctor chapel go down. Not much has been built from the doctor chapel. I don't think there's even there's not even like a las cannon in the drop pod or anything. So we do have a ton of power, and we got a death storm drop pod coming down that's gonna kill a ton of these units. And uh, we do got uh, sorry death watch dropping back in. So we're seeing a ton of these orc units going down. Gorgas is really trying to claw, but he keeps getting disrupted by those assault marines. So, I think Gorgas might actually go down here. He's got too much damage on him, too much slow. We see that Vortex grenade, the debuff. He is, the Gorgas is going to go down here. That axe is pretty epic, though. Look how many squads up there. The Gorgas does go down. This knob squad is going to go down as well. We do have one last kind of here, I should, I should say. We did build a last kind of, but I would have liked to see one in the drop pod, maybe. But he's got a Orbital Relay, Dreadnought, in the drop pod. So, he does have the Orbital Relay from somewhere. I'm not really sure where. Maybe that's just the icon that's used for it. Okay. Swordboy's doing some harassment. Again, Orc Army is pretty, pretty meager. Still no uh, infantry upgrades. But he's using one on this brand new tower. But he's using it while he's reinforcing. Kind of poor timing on his part, I feel. You want to activate log right when you're running towards the enemy. You're wasting it, basically. So, he does have some tank busters. That'll help against any Dreadnought. But uh, it's not enough. Just one squad of tank busters. And he has a ton of power. He's starting to build some rec gens, so we do got some rec, some rec gens here. At this point, still completely, you know, untouched, upgraded, even giving more income. The thing about upgraded resource points um, is that they also, when they get destroyed, they don't downgrade. So if your opponent captures it, they automatically get the bonus resources. So when you upgrade a point, you want to make sure that uh, you're not letting your opponent take it from you. So yeah, no infantry upgrades, no, no mech shop. Maybe another knob squad would be good. I would like to see a war truck with some reinforcement. I think that would help a ton of these fights. Not that it's hard to get the war truck alive against Jonah though, because Jonah does deal uh, true damage with his bolt, and it does do a pretty decent damage to the war truck. But it would be nice to have one. Scouts is kind of scouting. We're seeing Wad go off again. This point's gonna get taken out, I think, before he can defend it here. There's a lot of space marine forces there. We do have. The uh, machine called up. We do got armory getting more infantry upgrades. So we do have infantry health too almost done here. Right when this fight starts, it's pretty much going to be done. And that's going to boost all these units' health. These assault mates might get picked off here, but I think they can jump out. There comes the drop pod. Dreadnought jumping in right on all these units. And these shooter boys are going to take a ton of damage from the AoE. All getting knocked down, getting shot at. The assault mates did escape just fine. So, so far, I think this game is pretty much in Spirit's hands. I think he has the eco lead. I think Orc is playing pretty bad. Sex Beam is not. Uh, the most inspirational orc player as far as I've seen. He is top 10 though, so he probably wins more games than he loses. But his style of play I find is pretty weak. But we'll see. Uh, Spirit's also a pretty good player, so you know when you play against someone as, as good as Spirit, you're probably gonna look bad. We got Weird Boy coming in. Weird Boy, I don't see being instrumental against his army. He does have Fist of Gork, and that might be good. But I don't know. Weird Boy, you really need him in the first like six, seven minutes, not 20 minutes into the game. We're gonna have the Ben Drive pretty soon here. And, oh, I don't know, a minute? So, Vendred coming in in a minute is gonna basically seal this game in the favor of Spirit, I think. We do have this Dreadnought doing a ton of eco damage. This point might actually get, might take out all these generators. He is using the Vortex Grid, and all these units are gonna get zapped, doing tons of bonus damage. The shield goes up too late, and they take all the health damage. They lose all those models. They're not reinforcing when they could be. Uh, they, they could all be reinforcing right now, boosting damage and health. And keeping them alive, but nope, not reinforcing, no upgrades. We do have these knob squads been focused by these last cannons. We do have vehicle health too, gonna upgrade. These last cannons, by the way, they're doing their max damage. It's like, oh fuck, it's like 65 range DPS. That's a ton of damage on those knobs. Um, the only way to disrupt that is to stun them or knock them down. So you want to make sure you're periodically, that every time you hit them with a, like a stun or something, it resets their damage. So you can see it's just slowly draining that green bar under their health. But if, you, if you're constantly like knocking them down or stunning them, it resets it completely. So you want to make sure you're doing that as much as possible against last guys. We've got to see a walk push, and we are going to see this army just retreat here. This generator getting wiped out against assault means, uh, this loop generator is still out this entire game. So Vedra's going to come out pretty soon here, probably in time for this engagement. I would like to see him using the weird boy teleport in addition to walk to try and catch up with his army. I feel like that would be useful, but uh, not really using it effectively. No Fist of Gork either, like... Put it over here. We got to see Vendred, maybe? Something's dropping in. Uh, probably a Death Storm. Nope, there's a Vendred dropping in, and he's going to do a ton of damage to all these units. He's going to obliterate these shooters. One squad of shooters is down. The other squad extremely hurt. These tank busters are doing decent damage. No bomb squigs. No bomb squigs being launched at those. 
Yeah, that Vendred. Bombs please do a ton of damage. Uh, we're gonna see these knobs get on the Vendred, but it's not gonna be super effective. We're seeing the Axe speed stuff. Weird Boy has a lot of shield here. But, uh, I don't know, this Vendor needs to start shooting stuff. Remember the reverse move when you're walking away with these units? Because they can keep shooting on the move. Storm Boys just barely jump out. Storm Boys are jumping in on these tank busters. No Bomb Squigs yet. Uh, bomb Squigs do about 500 damage per pot. So if you get those on that vehicle, they're doing a ton of free damage. It's always worth using. But, uh, not use them. Weird White's using teleport to save himself is a waste of teleport. It's meant to be a group teleport, not a solo teleport. But I guess he needed it there. He probably would have died if he didn't use that. We don't have. We do have tier three for space springs as well at this point. Uh, we might see more infantry damage. Probably, I, I'm probably going to see a predator at this point. Predator and destructor would be a pretty good choice against his aura composition or a whirlwind. A whirlwind would be pretty devastating given what we've seen of uh, sex beams micro. There's still no no more upgrades. He does have the money though. He, he, he's not even upgraded at this point at all. So he has like one generator versus spirit having like twelve. So, uh, the game is pretty much in Spirit's hands here. I think it's just a matter of Spirit building up a critical mass of units and pushing him. I think he has more than enough to really wipe weapons this whole He's using Wog. We're gonna see the Bomb Springs. The Bomb Springs are coming out! But they're coming out by themselves, so they're gonna get shot before they can do anything. He does manage to actually blow up a decent amount of damage. You see, it took out the entire shield. So, Bomb Springs are no joke. I would like to see maybe some Plasma Guns on these attacks that would boost their damage significantly. We're gonna see these units get healed with the standard. I don't know how much time is left on that. Not a ton of time, but it is healing all these units. And I think we are going to see the Vendred come in here and blow up a ton of units. We're going to see something drop in here. Once he breaks the shield down on the on the, the power core, or not power core, the shield generator, he can uh, just obliterate all these units. Vendred's just doing tons of damage. We got two Dreadnoughts dropping in. This Dreadnought's taking a ton of damage from Gorgas. We do got an Orbital coming in. I'm not 100% sure why the beam is going that way. And not too much CO probably. We got about number one coming off here. The beacon was captured, so it's gonna be a while since orbital could be useful. Gorgas is also getting in there. This log so far, I don't know. We got scrap piles. Phase three is here. We can start seeing some kilocans or death copters. We got a fist of gork. That's a pretty good fist of gork landing. We got all those techs and just a critical damage. That's pretty amazing damage. I would like to see Gorgas get in on this shit. Maybe tie this last cannon. Get these units in that fight. Like, what are they doing? Get in there. But uh, Gorgas is being hit by some assault marines. He is trying to get this uh, Vendor out, but it's too low to lay. Deathwatch drop it in. We're going to see a Vortex grenade from all these units, and we're going to take tons of bonus damage. Kind of a missed star there. Bomb Squirts are coming out this time. So we might see these Vendor, these units are going to get hit by these Bomb Squirts. They do tons of damage. Of course, now that they're prioritized by the auto fire, they're not quite as deadly as they used to be. But I think we're going to see the Vendor just continue to do massive damage and all this stuff. No upgrades yet, no new units. Uh, we do have more upgrades. We've got power swords coming for those assault mines. That's going to be pretty devastating to those knobs. Uh, once assault mines get no uh, power swords, they just absolutely shred. We're going to see the power. The shield generator is going to go down. So we're going to see uh, Jodder probably come back in. We're going to see another dreadnought. Lots of dreadnoughts. I don't know if dreadnoughts are really being that effective. Gorgats is. I'm different about last cannons. As you said, red bar on the Gorgats claw. That's the health of the claw. If you destroy the health, you stop spinning the claw. I would like to see him maybe throw the claw. Yeah, he's got to throw the claw here. And he does manage to grab a couple units there. Weird Boy is way too far forward. Weird Boy is over his center. He's going to have to get out of that uh, now. Uh, Weird Boy, shield is down. Weird Boy is going to go down here. Almost. Uh, he does barely teleport away. That's okay teleport. I'd like this Weird Boy pick up the scrap here. To get some shields. Uh, get some uh, scrap on Gorgas maybe. Let him use the spinning claw to completion. That's always worth it. Uh, but economically speaking, we're just... Spirit is just so far ahead. We got another knob squad coming. We got another last cannon and a predator destructor coming for spirit. So at this, I think we're reaching that point where uh, sex beam is pretty much out of the game. He might use rocks to his advantage here. He does have a lot of lead points here, but uh, I think he's just uh, he's, he shouldn't be engaging with his, his stuff with like half health like this. He's gonna get shredded. Uh, I think we're gonna see Vendred push Q and win the game right about now. I think he's gonna all gonna die. But uh, we'll see. We might see a Fist of Gork here. Yeah, Fist of Gork is coming in. Vendred is shooting up. Vendred does miss. Fist of Gork does connect, but it doesn't do maximum damage. Gorgas is low. Uh, salt Mines are jumping in a little overextended. Yeah, I don't know. Really. Uh, no mech shop. No infantry upgrades yet for orcs at all. Uh, we have another Dreadlock coming in. Gorgas might. No, I think Gorgas is fine. Power Swords are up for those Assault Mines. And we could see maybe a back door or something on the turret. I don't know. 
Orc is kind of, uh, he's getting more shooters. I don't think shooters are the answer here. I think we need to get some vehicles. I would probably go for like a, uh, some cheap killer cans from all these scrap piles. I think that would be the way to go at this point for Mr. Sex. Maybe. He does need to get a mech shop to do that though, but I think that'd be a worthwhile investment just because he could uh, do a lot more damage to all these units. Yeah, he's just gonna keep Spirit is just pumping out dreadnought after dreadnought. Nothing in droplets right now, but we do have a Predator out, another attack spot. I would like to see a flamer attack or two. I think that would be really helpful with the, the, the just spray it at the orc army. Storm boys can come back in, maybe try and harass, but again, yeah, we have so much resources for Spirit. Upgrading all these resource points, and we have like none. This isn't upgraded yet at all. This is three generators, four to five generators versus like 12. Elite point generator, kind of useless at this point, but it's more than paid for itself. So we're going to see another engagement here, but typically I see this eco go down. I think Spirit has what he needs to win this game. I think a Whirlwind would be the next best move. Whirlwind can soften up all those log towers and scrap piles. Uh, it's actually really powerful against Orcs. We're going to see an amazing fist of Orcs get up. That is going to do a ton of damage to those units. But I think it's just too little too late. We're going to see the stone wall being used pretty effectively. All these units are doing nothing. They're just attack moving, they're just shooting the shot blockers. Whenever you see like a shot blocker come up like this, you got to move your units around it. They're doing nothing right now. Absolutely nothing. And we're going to see uh, the storm wall does go down. These storm blades are taking a ton of damage. The storm blades are doing a ton of damage to these knobs. And I think we're going to see the knob knobs do get wiped out, but then Dread, not Vendred. Storm blades as well. Gorgats is super low health. Um, yeah, I really want to see a whirlwind. I think that's the go-to. You see how much healing with the tier 3 standard space range is... Space Marine is always going to win the War of Attrition unless you go Mechazord. That's one of the benefits of Orc. You get these scrap piles, you can build vehicles super cheap. That's what you need to do at this phase of the game. We're about 30 minutes in. That's almost phase 4. Again, you need to be building those vehicles for half price and just building a massive army. And Sex Beam doesn't have the economy nor the tech to do that at this point. We do have two Dreadnoughts and Drop Pods for the next engagement. We've got more tech raids. We do have more upgrades. We've got almost max vehicle upgrades, max health. Infantry damage one. Still no upgrades for any of these orc infantry or vehicles. We do finally have a mech shell. We might see some death copters being used to do some harassment. That'd be a too little too late, but it'd be something. Building more log towers like this for full price? I don't know about that. He could build them from the scrap piles for much cheaper, much faster. Fist of Gorp coming in. Pretty good hit, pretty good hit. But this is too little too late. Too little too late. I think we're going to see all these log towers and scrap be obliterated. And I think this orc army is going to get pushed back. The turret's going to get sniped. So these last cannons are going to be full charge. And that's just going to accumulate. Dreadnought coming and raid on all these tank posters. And we're going to see these units get knocked back. They, yeah, we're going to see the shooters get picked up. We're going to see all the production go down here. This is all, much all the production that uh, Sex Beam has. And I think the Space Marine army is just too big. We're going to see the boys that go down. We're going to see these log towers go down. These dreadnoughts are kind of being used a little disposable. And they're not really priced that way, but we're going to see the mech shot go down too. No more tank busters. So it's going to be three squads of tank busters and whatever uh, sex beam can muster. Oh, he's not focused fire on the mech shot. We're going to see one more tank squad. Tank buster squad. That's going to be a tie turner right here. This tank buster squad is going to decide the game. These last cannons are just doing immense uh, damage right now with their damage buff. Uh, none of the tank buster squad did nothing and died. Okay, well the mech shot's going to go down now. And we're probably going to see all the bog towers are down. So at this point, the game is pretty over. We've got him building a bush hut up here. Blech. And here goes all the economy for Sex Beam at this point. So you see all these big ass scrap piles. These are what I would like to call missed opportunities. There's so many units that could have been built from this. But uh, Sex Beam didn't have the economy. And he didn't really have a cohesive attack plan. He just kind of kept using Wog and attacking and then running out of steam. And yeah, these early game elites don't scale up to a long game like this. So that's the disadvantage of using all these early game elites. If you don't win the early game, they're they're gonna fall off in effectiveness pretty quick in the late game. And at this point, we've got all the tools he needs to destroy this turret. There's nothing to defend this. A couple of tank busters at best. And uh, at this point, it could just be an attack move and win. But Spirit playing a little cautiously. No upgrades. No, no, nothing. He built the mech thing, but he didn't build any vehicles from the scrap. So ultimately, I think Sex Beam. Uh, is not taking full advantage of his race. I think he's just reliant on specific tactics to kind of win. And I think it's really showing my plays against a player like Spirit, who is fully utilizing their race. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.